Okay, so I was up last night trying to fall asleep, but all of these thoughts just kept bubbling up in my head with what to do with this particular project. I had an art opening over the weekend. Some of my artwork was up, but I'm the curator. And I typically don't put my artwork up when I'm curating because I want to represent my artist, but it was a brand new venue and I was encouraged to do so, so I took that opportunity. What I am working on today is... So this is like a mixed media project and I really enjoy it. It's kind of a nice one. Well, this is clearly not the finished product. It needs to be finished somehow. So at the art opening, it was really interesting. I'm glad I got this perspective and you can let me know in the comments below if you agree. So I had an artist submit work and it was like on one of those embroidery hoops and they submitted the work and it looked really cool hanging up. But I had a patron come up to me and say, you know, I would love to buy that work, but the hoop, the actual embroidery hoop didn't go with any decor in my house, I wish that they had framed it. So I started thinking about my own artwork and what kind of feedback that is. Now everybody's taste is different. You can never nail it 100% of the time, right? But I started thinking, okay, I could leave it a rough edge, but I don't really wanna do that. I think I wanna finish the edge of this and then I want to attach it to some sort of board and then put it in a frame. But I don't even know how to go about that. Frames are extremely expensive. I was just going to have this hanging on the wall as like a tapestry, but I don't know if that would go with anybody's decor at home. So there's a lot of different things I'm always thinking about when it comes to making my own artwork. The other thing that I noticed was a lot of my artwork did not have for this particular project, a lot of this work didn't have much going on in the sky besides the clouds, maybe the moon and some stars. So there wasn't really any rainbows or something like that. So I just wanted to play with that idea today. Taking a look at this, you can see that a lot of these are nighttime, but then I kind of moved on to some sunsets and I have a few in here that are blue sky. So I'm going to take a pause from the nighttime stuff right now because I just did a ton of it not that long ago. And we're going to move into working on this blue sky and I want to add maybe some rainbows in. So I'm just thinking about my composition here. I want this to be very subtle and more realistic than anything. I mean, it's definitely there. I know that it's, I intellectually know that it's there. Look at this. Ugh. You know, you think about art, right? And you think nice little paintings or whatever you think, right? When you first think about art, that's not what I think about, but when I think about it, the general public thinks about art. <clears throat> and you see this final product right and usually it's pretty sleek it has all of its uh facets everything's like really going for it <laughs> it's finished right but you don't see the entire mess that came before it and that's why i like to share the process of just how crazy things can almost get in the studio at any given moment and how organic that nature is when it comes to creating something i mean i I used to tell everyone all the time, you can't create without making a mess. And I would have, you know, colleagues or fellow students uh, or even my own students who would get really upset about making messes. And let me tell you, you can't do it. You can't create anything without making a giant mess. And they were not. But I mean, getting covered in, in your art material, that's almost a badge of honor at this point. I'm going to move that even further out of the way. So my arm just doesn't waste the material. I don't care if it's on me, but I don't really want it to waste the material. First, but in this case, I really... Why am I still getting covered in purple? Pause. Pause. 
Have you ever had a day like that where it's just like, it just keeps coming at you? Clearly, it was on the table, and then I kept putting my arm in it. Usually my work, if you've seen any of it before in my portfolios, is very, very serious. I grew up in just a really challenging environment, to say the least, and so a lot of my work will focus on my childhood and like just processing things that have happened and I really needed a mental like break from all of that so I decided to pick up this multimedia project because I needed a mental break from all the heaviness and all the self-exploration and work and it's interesting because, you know, you think about it and people wouldn't necessarily want that kind of heavy stuff in their household, but I really, I wasn't creating it for the masses or for anyone in particular. I was creating it for myself and I spent a long time <clears throat> doing that. And I think it was beneficial because I started to not only heal internally, right? I was dealing with my stuff and so I was healing, but then also I was able to sort of just be in this space of where, oh, I'm not making this for anybody. I'm not doing it for anybody else other than me. And so that was a time in my life that I really needed as an artist. And I highly encourage that you still, if you're an artist and you're making artwork, that you make work for yourself that maybe never sees the light of day or you don't share with anybody else because it's personal work. Not everything has to go out into the public and be for something other than your own self. And then we're going to move on to this one. Ooh, this one's stormy. I don't know if this would be a good fit for a rainbow. But you know what this would be a good fit for? Is lightning. Pew, pew, pew. So whenever I'm, I'm creating a storm, and I do have some that are very, very stormy, I like to start with like a darker cloud for the shadow of these clouds. Because normally when you look at the clouds, they'll have like this layer, this like highlight, midtone, and shadow that kind of come up. I personally like doing the stormy ones. <laughs> I like it more than the bright sunny day ones. But I understand that with this, you know, I'm kind of exploring this idea that nature is constantly shifting and changing. And I'm trying to tap into this understanding that nothing stands still for very long and we must always be changing. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just want these to look more fluffy, so I'm kind of using a, a little bit more of a, a circle brush stroke here. And there's a bit of scraffito going on because of the texture of the actual canvas is very, very coarse, which I like because it's very interesting. I'm just gonna add the white right over it. There we go. And the thing about lightning is it kind of spider webs out. or at least it can. Pretty 
pretty happy with that. I don't think I want to add anything else. We're good. <laughs> I have noticed lately that I need to pull back on so much. I have a million things going and it's just incredibly overwhelming. It's distracting from the things that I need to be doing for me. And it makes me a little frustrated. I feel like I'm losing my cool more than I should be. And all I really want to do is, I don't know, just focus on what I need to be focusing on. And I don't, I don't know what happened. It was like one minute I had, I was making stuff up for my schedule. I had to fill my schedule full of things. And the next second my schedule so overflowing that I feel like I can't even catch up. And I'm having a hard time because I'm one of those people who's extremely loyal. So if I say I'm going to do something, I'm not only going to do it, but I'm going to do it to the best of my ability, which is 150%. And it's difficult to keep running at that speed. And I feel very isolated. I live upstate so there's not a lot that goes on like now. Everybody's going back to the city or wherever they're coming from. So it's going to get pretty quiet around here within the next couple of weeks. So any events and stuff like that will start to shift and it will change into mostly, thankfully for me, a lot of just work on my artwork and other things. But it has been very taxing. I, I'm one of those people I'm just, I prefer a lot of alone time. And it's been really challenging to lately just be with a bunch of people all the time and trying to get things running all the time and just being on other people's schedules. So I'm just feeling a bit overwhelmed and totally tapped out. Which is good to that I'm being able to spend, which it's good that I'm able to spend time in the studio and kind of reconnect, but I also have a lot to figure out. I feel like being an artist most of the time is a lot of like stuff floating around in your head that you just need to get out. So whether that's, you know, how to connect this to that, how to move this over here, how to pretty much do everything. <laughs> you need to do because you wear so many so many hats and I feel like I wear every hat imaginable I probably wear it so I've definitely been struggling with being overwhelmed for the past month and I really just need like a vacation but that's not gonna happen I am not typically the pers the type of person that would say, oh, I don't want to do something, so I just won't. And lately I have been just in this mindset where like I strictly will not do things if they're not going to fuel me in some way. So I've also been putting my foot down and that's been a really hard transition because of course there's a lot of guilt when I'm setting those boundaries of just like, I am so tapped out right now. 
I mean, people have to make an appointment with me right now. Like they just have to, if they want my time, they have to say, Hey, are you available? All right. I'll put you in the calendar. And that's not even me being like super rude. It's just, I'm so exhausted. And it's hard to be a creator when you're so, so tired, you can't see straight. Right? That seems counterintuitive. I wish that, <laughs> I wish that the path to understanding oneself and where you fit in your own life and gratitude and compassion and living wasn't such a convoluted and challenging path. It's exhausting. Let me know if you feel the same way, because I am literally always tired now. All right, so this was, I just hit it with the heat gun because I didn't want it to be super wet. So this is one, they all are. I try to make them look different because that to me is the spark of creativity is when you get to flex a little bit in the area of making something unique. And then I did a stormy one with a lightning bolt and I'm going to do more of these. This was, I loved this. This is like, like there's a lot of emotion <laughs> I'm feeling. I did these little baby ones. They need to be hit with the heat gun cause they're still wet. I'll probably end up putting a coat of something over these before I sell them because this, you know, could really rub off or something. So I have to think about that a little bit more, how I want to end it. And then I did this last one here. I really like this one. This one needs to dry as well. Yeah, so being an artist, that's super challenging and there's a lot to think about all the time and it's an exhausting process because you're certainly trying a whole bunch of different stuff all the time. And I find that what I'm going to do is sit with this feeling for a while and then kind of get back on track with what makes sense for me and who I am as an individual and just hunker down into that so with that being said, we're probably going to see a lot less of the, the yoga sequences and practices. I'm still going to be doing the community yoga and I will be doing my reviews and then also doing the yoga sequences, but I'm going to pull back a little bit and really start focusing more on the artwork and connecting that all together through the art. That's my big announcement really for where the directions are headed. I'm super grateful for yoga. I'll always be doing it and, and participating in it. I'm just gonna pull back a little bit so that really shouldn't affect anything, but you're going to see that this channel sort of melds and molds into a more authentic representation of a journey that I am on personally as an artist. And then, and then how can my personal experience benefit you in your life and just maybe some big things that you're working through. So I wanna say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, just hit that like button and of course subscribe to the channel for more content like this and all the awesome things that I'm gonna be doing in the near future. Have a warm and wonderful day, everybody.